And how about Gulf region? For example, why not in Doha or Dubai? Uh, um, I mean, all these, it's always a combination also of possibilities which come together, you know, like uh, uh, occasions and, and, and propositions we get. But um, I would also say that the mentality of the culture and, and lifestyle is much closer to, to our um, way of thinking in Seoul than it is in Doha. And also, I mean, it's interesting, you can see that, for example, uh, the, uh, the art fair company, which is running um, Dang Dai and also um you know who who uh, magnus um who used to found art basel uh, who used to found art uh, hk which turned into art basel hong kong they are going to open a space a fair in seoul and also apparently freeze i don't know if they still but they were considering going to seoul um yeah and seoul offers really you know there's no inheritance inheritance tax on art and there's also no vat there's zero VAT on art purchases. And of course, even though these things sound uh, kind of trivial, of course, these stimulus, um, that's a strong stimulus on, on um, acquiring art for people, you know, because it, uh, like in Germany, for example, uh, if you buy art from a gallery, you have to pay 19% VAT. Um, and this means you need to make, um, uh, like on a on a speculative aspect or, or as an investment, you need to make that 19% profit before you even make 1% profit. And I mean, a 19% return, uh, it's already quite quite high. So this would mean you would have to make at least a 30% return before you to 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 achieve an 11% return. So um, the, the the other positive sides is that, for example, in Germany, if you sell art, you're not taxed on art uh, profits. But the VAT is really a problem. Um, that's why a lot of things we, we are presenting here, they are temporarily imported from third countries. So they're coming from Switzerland or from outside the European Union. So they can be sold on a, uh, on a 7% VAT uh, charge. And this is actually, I think, also a reason why we eventually might be more successful than other colleagues is that we really spend a lot of, we are really are, client uh, centered in, 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 in how we look at, at things. So we wanna make it as easy as possible for the client uh, and also as um, uh, inexpensive because of course our, our net stays the same if it's 19% or 7% VAT, but uh, of course, if we make it more attractive to, cl to clients, we, are, we can uh, better compete uh, and um, um we 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 save budgets of our clients which lead into higher spendings uh, at our gallery overall this is this is great because we had the same problem uh, we have still the same problem the 80 is very high uh, when you purchase art uh, in turkey it's about 18 percent but there is no vat when if you buy diamond <laughs> for example so this vat is is this is, is a problem. So how do you arrange? You have uh, like warehouses in Switzerland. How do you do that? Um, uh, no, it, it, it's only, you know, I mean, it's also an ecological disaster somehow because sometimes we, 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 we have the consigners ship the work to Switzerland or outside the EU and then ship it back to us totally only for fiscal reasons. And of course, it's like, uh, it's fully legal. There's no uh, gray area about it, but it's mm -hmm. it's um, you just have to ship that stuff around. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So you 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 try to solve problems, uh, uh, you know, facilitate your clients' purchases this way. Yeah, since when when Corona happened and Art Basel was cancelled, we launched our own art fair here at the gallery. Yes. Yes, in June you had. In June, exactly. And that kind of um, turbo jumped us into the secondary market. And, uh, and, and um, when and this kind, kind of triggered the, you know, it's, 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 it makes no sense to, to ship a work uh, around for, which doesn't have a high value. But when we are talking about a 500,000 euro Basel, it's, it's definitely worth it to, 
um, uh, to think of how could you um, avoid VAT while staying in the legal uh, region, of course. Um, and these, and this is how. I mean, that's why a lot of collectors have their residences in Palm Beach, you know. So because there's no uh, property tax. Exactly. And not pro so, yeah, property. Yeah. So, um, do you think that each gallery somehow should be involved in the secondary market operations? I mean, it's an interesting evolution. I, uh, when I started my gallery, I, I, I really thought it's not a good thing to do secondary market. Uh, looking back now, I can't really tell you why anymore, but I was very, um, I had really uh, strong opinions against it about it. And I only noticed now that when we had the art fair here, which included a lot of secondary market works from private collectors, uh, other dealers, um, and also auction houses, which uh, consigned their um guarantee you know the the work they own um and different various different sources where we had the works from that uh, lead into um, a lot of new clients which were for example coming here to look at an autopina painting and ended up buying a katarina grosso work or or vice versa you know so i think that um it really opens the spectrum uh, to to and it's very client uh, friendly because they have a uh, here we 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 hosted it down here in the in the space you know we uh, mm -hmm. put more more of these walls up and then um, um, so they they had the chance to have a quick overview of what's um, somehow available on the art market uh, with well researched prices oh and that's a different. Uh, uh, thing also, we are um, um, we are uh, pricing out all works. You know, you can see here this work by Nette Cam. I don't know if you can see now. Uh, it's it has a it has a price tag on it, and mm -hmm. and this is the case with all um, with all the work here. For example, you see this work here by Katharina Grosse, and then it says here. Um, 170,000 euro. Mm -hmm. um, so people can, you know, they don't have that strong, they don't have that high barrier to, to, um, to ask, you know, they can just get an idea themselves. Mm -hmm. And one, once they are uh, interested, they can, they can look uh, for someone uh, opening a dialogue about what that work is about and uh, why it has that price and another, another and so on. And, and this sort of very transparent activities kind of boosted uh, turnover significantly. Uh, and also, uh, I think that the art market really has a problem of somehow ignorant uh, arrogance and um, we all, all, all those who are, uh, all those who are part of the art industry, they, they of course know how it works and what the other, unwritten rules but i think the biggest problem the art industry has is to get new participants exactly. and um and this is something we um we are really we, we are urgently looking for um for sales people because we have more clients than we can uh, service because we are and i don't know how many galleries are re in this moment um hiring people but we really need more um um, professional salespeople because uh, each client needs a lot of um, time and appreciation, and we we even even the fact that the, all the art fairs were cancelled, we saw an increase of our turnover, um, and, and that's uh, really I think also because um, um, by selling uh, higher ticket artworks um, is a question of personal relationship. And and good, it's it's kind of weird to use these terms in the art in the art world, but it's really about customer care and um, looking after them, and um, um, yeah, treating each client as best as possible. Actually, you're uh, you're really following uh, the 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 requirements of uh, most modern marketing activities, and uh, being transparent is also. Uh, key. I always uh, supported this view that art market is not transparent enough so that 
uh, online sales and all the online art platforms will uh, will boost fast because they let people to compare prices, see prices of artworks and compare them, and uh, that will give confidence, trust to people. So you you do the same thing without getting online, so people have access to to prices. And oh, no, we uh, are fully we are online with it. I think that's the best turnout of Corona that everybody or that most of people are way more and that Art Basel, for example, decided to do their platforms um, uh, online with at least a price indication. And I think that's the best. We are doing this for two years now already. But mm -hmm. but I yeah. think that this is the best result uh, of this crisis that there's more price transparency. Uh, and it's also online. Like when we have our art fair, it's um, I, I, all the work. So the concept of the art fair is, is quite interesting because um, we give collectors a chance to sell artworks uh, for their um, expected price without the risk of uh, burning it. So because often you have, like if you, if you want to, there's so many possibilities to buy art, but there are not so many to sell. And if you want to sell exactly. a work, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the usual way to go is to an auction house. But the auction house has a natural interest in... Um, uh, starting as low as possible to as attract as many bidders as possible. And if um, and the auction house in the end for them, it, it doesn't really matter if it's success, if it is a successful sale or not because they get their uh, premium in any case, you know, even if they if they sell uh, your work uh, at the low estimate or even below, uh, just on the reserve, they make their margin. And even if it's not selling, it's of course, not in the interest of the auction house not to sell, but it's not a problem for the auction house not to sell, not as much as for the client, because once your work hasn't sold in the auction, everybody can see it on Artnet that it has not sold, and you might um, have to wait a couple of years before you're able to um, bring that work back to market. And the um, possibility of the art fair here is that you can show this work in a more discrete environment and at the beginning we had like a, a photo of um, it was not allowed to take photos and collectors were able to opt if they wanted to have their work presented online or not mm -hmm. and we noticed now that even works which um, were shown publicly and online with a price tag which did not sell where it, it was no problem to sell after because there's no permanent register of it. So even if I have a work here, which I'm publicly displaying and not selling, uh, so you have a high chance to sell it on site, but also we sold a lot of work uh, online. Uh, actually, we sold quite some work to Turkey um, because of our uh, online presentation uh, of the art fair with prices indicated. But even if that's not the case, after the fair is over, we, or the, we return the unsold works to the consigner, we remove move them from the website and then they are still market fresh because you can't look them up on Artnet, Artprice uh, um, and so on and so forth, all these databases or even on the auction houses database. And, and that's a great advantage uh, for, um, you can even try out if you are able to sell a work on the secondary market with us uh, or not. So I think that, that, that this, um, this sort of health crisis led us into new possibilities of experimenting with uh, alternative secondary market ways than um, uh, then it would have been possible before, you know? This is an excellent, uh, excellent idea. And uh, I think you diagnostic the, the problem correctly. The, there, are, there are artworks to, 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 for sale, but the, uh, the secondary market operations for lesser known artists are limited. So, what to what to create this uh, this uh, uh, you know uh, liquidity or uh, traffic if you want? And you know, uh, more and more we will see um, big galleries, multinational galleries like Koenig Gallery, to uh, to be part of the secondary market uh, activities because your uh, your brand gives trust to other buyer sellers to 
um, to, to collaborate with you. What do you think about that? Do you are you going to yeah. continue this art fair? Yeah, we we'll continue it. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do it again in May. Um, um, it's from here. Yeah, this is this is actually it, it, we we play with the name Messe because it used to be up. Oh, it used to be a a, a church. One second, yeah. It used to be a church, and, and Messe means uh, church service. So we play with the word Messe in St. Agnes, and the next edition is from 2nd to 9th of May. Um, and But it's not only for mid-career artists who don't really have a secondary market yet. We sold a work by Neo Rauch um, for 700,000 US dollars here. And I thought that this price would be very uh, too optimistic. Um, and it also took, I mean, it took until the end of the fair. Um, but the client said, okay, uh, you can try it. And if it's not selling, it was not allowed to take a picture. Um, and, and I don't think that this price, because this was a work which was auctioned two years ago, and um, before we sold it um, for significantly less. And I don't think that this work would have had that result in auction after premium prices, because um, it was, a, you know, so, so the, the, the chance was here to, we, you can just try. There's nothing, the, the, good, the good thing here is you have nothing to lose. You, you put the work up, if it doesn't sell, Boys. Not the entire world can see it forever in a database that it didn't sell, you know, because it's only um, online as long as um, as it's available. And once we uh, we take it out, it's uh, not at Artsy, not at Artnet, not at uh, our website, um, uh, and it's not. There's no no record of it. So even if the work is sold or not sold, you don't tell it online. During the we fair, only we 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 on our Instagram channels now we are uh, preparing that to advertise the fair. We are sharing the results we were able to achieve for works, if um, if the clients have an interest, uh, if they are fine with that. But if if the the work, if it you can't understand if it was sold or not, we are not we are not reporting, and right. um, I mean occasionally we share we share some insights for press. But only after consent of the buyer and uh, and seller. But um, in general, we don't. Um, uh, I mean, the auction houses they don't have a choice if, if they want to report their results. Artnet is just taking it, and the same with Artprice and and all the other platforms. So you have a. Um, so it's kind of a mix, you know. It's it's um, uh, it, it is it is very transparent for the for the momentum. But after that, it's. It disappears, and it's. I don't think also it's large enough for. Uh, it's a bit like if you consign a work to a dealer on Art Basel, you know, if it's the this world can see that it's available, but if it's returning to you, then you can still give it to auction, and it's market fresh. Uh, there are uh, uh, th there is one thing which is also very interesting here. What you do in general, art fairs uh, for for galleries here, sometimes you deal maybe directly with collectors, collectors participating. Uh, to uh, like art fairs, you know, it, it doesn't happen. It happens only maybe through through galleries again. So you you make this uh, this happen, and uh, one next step. This is my own imagination. Uh, next step is to make it uh, permanent uh, and uh, have this, you know, twenty four hours, seven days a week access to buyers and sellers again you know given yes, the same yes. option and yeah. and and uh, maybe you can repeat this model and this may even become a separate business of uh, Koenig and you can repeat this model in in different markets i mean uh, there there is there's a huge business uh, uh, in 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 the world about that believe me and a very similar project has been launched in, in Istanbul by the, the biggest uh, art auction house, uh, Artam. They opened this buy, sell uh, immediately of option. So anyone can assign a work to, to the auction house. And so the you know, continuous art sales 
this way will be will be possible uh, you know secondary art in secondary art market what do you think about that yeah i i really do think that it has to be an online and offline uh, event sim simultaneously um, because I think uh, art needs to be experienced in person and, and we could see that we were way more um, the urge of making an acquisition decision was much higher um, given the fact that people knew that we would have an actual opening here in the space where people were gathering and looking at the work and um, I do think a little bit about a platform uh, customer to customer transaction like that clients are selling to other clients on a platform but i do think that the there are two problems with that first of all i think it's very it's, it is still important where you buy uh, and therefore you need some sort of um, um branded or uh, vehicle of relevance like sotheby's phillips koenig gagosian swerner whatever you need sure. some sort of 